This video is a brief introduction to three indicators of distribution spread, the range, variance, and standard deviation. Here's a normal distribution. The mean, median, and mode are statistics of central tendency. In other words, these statistics give us information about the location of the center of the normal distribution for a variable in a sample. It's also helpful to have information about how the distribution is spread out around the statistics of central tendency. The first and most simple of these statistics is the range. The range simply tells us the minimum and maximum value in our distribution. Say we have data on a variable, x, for a sample of six people. In this case, our variable distribution ranges from a minimum value of 2 to a maximum value of 6. A second measure of spread is the variance statistic. We do not commonly interpret the variance statistic in itself, but variance is very important for calculating many other statistics. Understanding how we calculate variance is important for understanding the standard deviation, which we will talk about afterwards. The first step when calculating variance is something we already know how to do. We have to calculate the mean for our variable's distribution. We do this by summing all of the values for our variable, then dividing by the total number of values. In this case, our variable's distribution's mean is 4. The next thing we need to do is get a sense of how much each individual value deviates from the mean. This makes intuitive sense. If we're interested in how values spread out around the mean, it makes sense that we would want to calculate how much each value differs from the mean. Visually, you can think of this as calculating each value's distance from the mean. Next thing we need to do is total our deviations. But if we simply add up all of our deviations, the negative and positive values tend to cancel each other out. In this case, we end up with a value of 0. This doesn't make sense because we know that our values do deviate from the mean, so our total deviation cannot equal 0. So we need one more step before we total our deviations. We square all of our deviations to make them positive. Then we calculate the sample variance, which is represented by the symbol sigma squared using this formula. Simply put, we add up all of our squared deviations, then divide by our sample minus 1. As you can tell from the formula, variance can be interpreted as the approximate average of our squared deviations. Using our example, if we total all of our squared deviations, we get 10. Then if we divide by our sample size minus 1, we get 10 over 5, or 2. So our sample variance in this sample is 2. As I previously mentioned, this number has little meaning in itself, but can be roughly interpreted as the average of the squared distances from the mean. To get our sample's standard deviation, which is symbolized as sigma, we take the square root of our variance. The reason we take the square root is that we originally squared all of our deviations to calculate variance. So to put the standard deviation back into our variable's units, we need to take the square root. And so the standard deviation is roughly interpreted as the average distance of our values from the mean. This is a visual depiction of our distribution for this simple example. From our calculation, the mean of the distribution is 4. Our standard deviation in each direction from the mean is depicted here. Our mean plus 1 standard deviation is about 5.4, and our mean minus 1 standard deviation is about 2.6. So what does our standard deviation actually tell us? This means that roughly, on average, our values deviate by about 1.4 units from the mean. We also know that if our variable is normally distributed, about 68% of our distribution falls in a range from minus 1 standard deviation to plus 1 standard deviation. 
approximately 95% of our distribution falls within two standard deviations around our mean, and approximately 99.7% of our distribution falls within three standard deviations of our mean. This is known as the 68-95-99.7 rule. These figures are helpful markers for understanding how our variable's distribution is spread out around the mean. Say, for example, our variable is weight, and weight is normally distributed in our sample. If someone, if someone told us the mean of our distribution for weight is 155 pounds, and the standard deviation is 15, we can make some estimates about the spread of the distribution. If we visualize the distribution, we can plot out one and two standard deviations from the mean in each direction. We can estimate that approximately 68% of individuals' weights fall between 140 and 170 pounds. We can also estimate that approximately 95% of individuals' weights fall between 125 and 185 pounds.